I come from the world of electronics, slightly complex world. I started as an engineering student, and as an engineering student, they tell you that real engineers come up with an idea and patent that idea. So freshman year of college, I told myself that I would have a patent by the time I was 30. A goal. I graduated, started coming up with ideas, and to sell those ideas, I started this crazy company called Spark Fun Electronics. This is the website. Ah, thank you. And we started to sell those ideas. Got a little bigger and a little crazier. And if you don't know about Spark Fun Electronics, we sell the bits to allow you to build a, a prototype or a project. And I'm going to give you some examples of some of our customers.、Uh, one of our customers used our product to track the flight migration of birds across North America. Another customer used our products to build an interactive flame art piece. <laughs> and another customer used our motion sensor combined with a microcontroller. Connected to a motor and attached that to a blender, he had a problem with cats jumping up on his counter, so he came up with the blender defender. <laughs> so this is what Sparkfun looks like. This is Evan. He's one of 135 employees at Sparkfun. They build over a million widgets a year, right here in Colorado. Now, as I went from starting my business to getting getting towards the age of 30, I started looking at the products we were selling and saying, "Okay, what are we going to patent?" And as I looked at other businesses that had patents, I didn't like what I saw. There was too many businesses that had too many patents that weren't innovating. They became unfit. And I, I came up with this idea of intellectual property obesity. This is a company that has patents that no longer innovate; they've become unfit. I'll give you an example. This is a patent from 1978 for the electronic still camera, filed by a company you may have heard of, Eastman Kodak. Kodak had the 25-year head start in front of a billion-dollar industry. What did they do with that patent? They they sat on it, they licensed it, and they、uh, went after anyone who infringed upon it. And this is a graph of two companies: the stock price. One is Canon, and one is Kodak. I'll let you guess which one is which. <laughs> and if you hadn't heard in the news recently, Kodak has recently filed for bankruptcy. How did a company? How did this happen to such a large, amazing company? I believe they became unfit. What large companies like Kodak didn't realize is that if your idea is unique, easily copied, and can be sold for profit, it will be. It's actually not this good. This is the sugar-coated version because unique ideas aren't the only ones that copied, and it doesn't matter whether it's easily or hard to copy, and it doesn't matter if you can sell the idea for profit. And come on, we all know the internet doesn't allow for local markets. If your idea can be sold. It will be. Let me give you some examples. We've all heard of the the mouse. We use one every day. How many times? How many different derivatives have we seen of that? That's a reasonably good idea. But how about a bad idea? <laughs> And I, I I don't know how many of you have an i5. I got you beat. I bought an i9. This phone was thirty-three dollars. It actually makes phone calls. It has Wi-Fi. It has Bluetooth. A complex device is just as easily copied as a simple device. Instagram, an amazing idea that posted no revenues, yet was copied time and time again. And again, with the internet, I can sell my product just as easily in South Africa. As I can here in Colorado. If your idea can be sold, it will be. Whoa! Hold on, you're scaring me. There's, this is this is why there's patents, right? This is why we come up with a technology and patent it. Say you've got an idea for a new technology. It costs thirty to fifty thousand dollars 
to file that paperwork with, a, with an attorney. It then takes three to five years for the U.S. Patent and Trade Office to even give you a decision on whether or not you should get a patent. Now, I don't know about you, but think about how much has changed in the past three years. How much will technology change in the next three? And this might be a good moment to remind you that U.S. patents only apply in the U.S. You're going to need a patent in every other country. Now, sure, maybe you could get an international patent. Maybe you want to do this, but it costs more money than I've got. I'd rather spend my time building stuff, and I certainly don't have the stomach to litigate in every other country. That's when I discovered open source. You Thank you. You may have heard of open source software. It runs your phones, it runs the internet. Open source hardware is a little different. It's for physical goods. The first step to open source hardware is that you come up with an idea and you share the plans with all your friends. And then you tell them that they can go ahead, take your idea and modify it. It's totally okay. And you can even sell my idea for profit. Now look at those three rules. That's going to happen no matter what. Whether you've got a patent or not, folks are going to reverse engineer your idea, they're going to modify it, and they're going to sell it. Open source hardware starts from this premise and adds only one thing, and that is that any future idea will also have to be open. So if you've got an idea, it can't be closed if it gets copied. I'll give you an example, scissors. Let's say I come up with the idea for scissors. I give you the, the, the CAD drawings or the model or whatever it takes, and you're really into unicorn horns. You modify it. Now, that's a model I never was planning on selling, so that's completely okay. But I look at those unicorn horns and I say, I wonder if I can learn something from that. I bet maybe I could shrink down those horns and add some bumps to the original scissors and make for a better grit. So you see, we can learn from each other's improvements and all the while innovate and create a better product across multiple bases. It's an example of the open source Geiger counter. One of the best examples I've seen in open source hardware, the Fukushima nuclear disaster was a tremendous loss. And many of the local citizens, after it occurred, wanted to find out just how much radiation was around them and in their food supply. To do this, you need something called a Geiger counter, a tool that measures radioactivity. The problem was is that in Fukushima, shortly after the disaster, these tools were not available. They were expensive, and they were out of date. It hadn't changed in 25 years. So a few engineers got together and started talking about how they could build a better open source, uh, how to build a better Geiger counter. They made it open source, they shared it with the community, and local residents in Japan were able to build a cheaper, better Geiger counter that they could actually get their hands on. That's the power of open source hardware. So you know, of course, I love open source hardware. And these are the reasons. First, it's a community good. I can learn from you and you can learn from me. It's where humans, I believe, started from, sharing. Second, this is capitalism with a capital C. If more companies are competing for the same amount of customers, you're going to see better quality, lower prices, and more features. And, la uh, and third of all, it makes businesses focus. My company builds electronics. That's all we can do. That's, we have to focus every day on what we're doing. And lastly, especially at SparkFun, we have to innovate. Our products have 12 weeks on average before they're copied by our competition. 12 weeks. I don't have five years. I don't have 10 years. We have to constantly innovate and come up with something new. So if your idea can be sold, where do we go from here? I believe you have a decision to make. Are you going to try to stop every company and every entity that copies your idea? Or are you going to find other ways to create value that's harder to duplicate? Now, you may think I'm naive. You may think I'm crazy and that an open source hardware company is unsustainable. That's okay. Myself, my 135 employees, 75 million in revenue, 
and 431 unpatented products. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you.